Welcome back guys. So in the previous lecture we have started building our virtual machine and in today's lecture we'll focus slightly on theory and we'll talk about stack machines and register machines. In addition we'll see examples of real bytecode used in uh, Java programming language and in Python. And in this case I'm going to delegate to the appropriate lecture from the Essentials of Interpretation class uh, and in the next lecture we'll come back to the implementation uh, of the EVA virtual machine. And uh, when we talk about virtual machines, we differentiate the stack-based machines and register-based machines. Let's see the difference. So in first case, we have concept of a stack. And uh, the convention here is that the result is always on top of the stack. Right? So after each instruction, you can be sure that the result is on top of the stack. In contrast, the register-based machines operate on the set of virtual registers. Now, a register is just a data storage, and uh, in physical machines it's located directly on the CPU, and uh, in virtual machine it might be just a storage for variables. Uh, the convention here is that the result and uh, final calculation is in a special register, uh, which by convention is called accumulator. Uh, for example, on Intel architecture it's register EAX, and uh, in your virtual machine it might be any you choose. Okay, let's take a look at the example to see the difference and uh, do some evaluations. Okay, so here again we have our source code, which in case of the stack-based machine can look something like this. Uh, compare again it's to the tree-like structure of the AST, right? So here we see plain array of the instructions. And uh, in fact it should be uh, source code is parsed to the AST and uh, already in bytecode emitter uh, here produces the bytecode. So, as we said, the stack-based machine should work with the concept of a stack. And uh, usually the top of the stack is pointed by the register or by a pointer known as stack pointer. Uh, currently, as we see, there is nothing on the stack. And the current instruction, which is to be executed, is held by the pointer known as instruction pointer or IP. Now, in this case, the first two instructions correspond to the setting of the value 15 to the variable x. Now, to set the value of a variable, we need to push the value onto the stack. This is exactly what this instruction uh, tells us to do, so we push it onto the stack, and the instruction pointer uh, is increased and points down to the next operation. Now, the set instruction sets the value of a global variable, and in this case it's percent %0. Uh, what is percent %0? Well, at the lower level we don't have already variables such as x or other names, and instead they are mapped uh, to the indices uh, of some uh, variable storage. So the index 0 here is mapped to the uh, variable x. So the set instruction should pop the value from the stack and update the variable storage, as we can see here. Okay, all the other instructions correspond to this complex expression. However, at the lower level, we don't have uh, such complex calculations as x plus 10 minus 5. Uh, instead, we have to deconstruct them to simpler expressions and uh, handle first uh, the first portion uh, here, x plus 10. Uh, so for this, we push the value of variable x onto the stack, then we push value 10 onto the stack, and call the add instruction. Now, the add instruction is the binary instruction, uh, which means it expects two values on top of the stack, uh, it adds them, and pushes the result back to the stack. Finally, we can execute a subtraction, and for this again we have to push value 5 and call sub, uh, which again pops both values and push the result. So at this step, the instruction pointer reaches the end of the bytecode, and uh, by convention, as we said, the result should be on top of the stack, and really we see value 20 there calculated. And here we should say that many virtual machines uh, leverage concept of the constant pool. Right? For example, in this abstract bytecode, we see um, explicitly value 15 is pushed onto the stack. Uh, however, virtual machine implementations uh, usually put uh, value 15 in the constant pool, and the constant pool might be just an array of constants. And then the bytecode uh, encodes not the actual value 15, but the index in that constant pool. Uh, for example, let's take a look at the actual EVA bytecode corresponding to this program. Right here we see that the uh, low-level stack operation such as push is abstracted away. Right? We use the const instruction, and instead of using the value 15 directly in the bytecode, uh, we just use the index 0 from the constant pool. Right? We see the value 15 is there. Right? Exactly the same, the set and get global instructions use indices in the global array of variables. And again, we see the const instruction with the indices 1 and 2, again from the constant pool. And so they correspond to the values uh, 10 and 15. 
Uh, again, it depends on the implementation. Uh, some virtual machines may prefer putting the constant directly, and for simple numbers, this probably uh, doesn't make much of the difference. Uh, however, when we talk about, say, uh, strings, they already are objects located on the heap, and uh, of course, we would like to reuse the same constant string, and it's a good idea to put it into the constant pool and just use the index instead of encoding, of course, the string uh, directly in the bytecode. And we should say the EVA virtual machine will be exactly the stack virtual machine. Uh, the notable examples probably are the Java programming language, uh, Python, uh, JavaScript, and many others. Okay, let's take a look at the real bytecode example, and uh, let's first use Java. Right? So, Java bytecode dot Java. So here we're going to have a class, and x equals fifteen. And then we're going to out print line x plus 10 minus 5. Okay. Now to compile this bytecode, we use a standard Java C compiler and which produces us this class file, right? Now if we introspect this class file, that is exactly the bytecode, right? As we can see, plain array of uh, instructions in the number format. However, we can obtain the textual representation of this bytecode if call uh, the utility called Java P, passing the dash C option. In this case, we pass the class file. And uh, really, we see here setting the variable x to the value 15, uh, then loading the variable x, loading the value 10, and call the add instruction, finally loading the constant 5, and calling this sub instruction. So pretty much the same as we have seen in our example. Okay, let's see one more example. I'm going to use this tool called Compiler Explorer. So let's take, uh, for example, Python, and uh, use our example, x equals 15, then do x plus 10 minus 5. And again, we see uh, the bytecode generated for the stack machine. Uh, right, first of all, the variable x is assigned value 15. For this, we load 15 on the stack and uh, call the store name instruction. Then we load the value of x, the constant 10, and call the add instruction. Uh, finally, we load the const 5 and call the subtract instruction. Right, pretty much the same again. Okay, this was the stack based virtual machine. Uh, now let's compare it to the register based machine. Now, in this case, the actual execution might be pretty much the same. Uh, the difference here, though, mainly in the bytecode. Uh, in this case, the machine operates with a set of registers. Uh, as we said, this is just data storage, and on physical machines, they are located on the CPU itself. Uh, as we can see, we have here four uh, basic registers, or general purpose registers, and three special registers, uh, instruction pointer, which we already have seen, a stack pointer, and base pointer. Now, we should also say that in most of the cases, uh, the virtual machines and uh, real machines are of mixed type, right? So if we take, for example, actual Intel architecture, uh, it's a register machine, which also has a stack. So it's a mixed machine. Even if it's register machine, you still need a stack to implement, for example, recursive functions, right? So stack pointer and the base pointer registers present here as well. Uh, the first instruction corresponds to the set in value 15 to the variable x. And the variable x is mapped to the register r1 here, so it's directly updated, and the instruction pointer is increased. Uh, next, we calculate the subpart of x plus 10, and since uh, the value of x is already in the register r1, we just add 10 there, and the value of r1 becomes 25. Finally, we can subtract value 5 directly from the register r1 and get the final result. Okay, so that was the register-based machine. Uh, some of the examples of the register machines are the uh, Lua virtual machine, uh, Parrot for Perl, and some others. Okay, that's it for today. In the next lecture, we'll get back to practice and continue implementation of the EVA virtual machine. Thanks, and see you in the class.